Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the State of New Jersey, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the governments established in the United States and in this state under the authority of the people. And I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all the duties of my office. State your names again. According to the best of my ability, that I will not do office as a police officer. Say police chief. 
Please According to the best of my ability, and that I will not use my office to grant provincial treatment, nor to seek personal gain, favor, or advantages not available to the general public. <laughs> According to the best of my ability, <laughs> and that I will not use my office to grant provincial treatment, nor to seek personal gain, favor, or advantages not available to the general public. So help me God. Hearing for ordinance 1303. This is an ordinance amending ordinance 0703 regulating salaries of employees of the borough of Renamy. Uh, this portion of the meeting is open to the public. Anyone wishes to speak on this ordinance and this ordinance only may step up, up to the microphone and give their name and address. Motion that we 
motion to adopt on second and final reading and advertise according to law. I make a motion. sent me the airport card, so it's very nice to receive. And I also wanted to let people in the audience know I was approached by a, a lot of council people and uh, county people, and they have told me how they think that running me really looks good when you're driving through this town. And I said, we're trying to look our best down for the people. And it's nice to hear it from other towns telling me that. And I wanted everyone to know that. So, but that's all the mayor has to say right at this present time. Thank you. Finance, personnel, administration. Thank you. Um, we've done our hiring. That was uh, very important for us to get this done. It's, it's been 12 and a half years since the Borough Fund Meet has uh, hired new police officers. It was great to get that done uh, without the help of the police union and the, uh, the chief and the captain uh, with our background and a lot of our work the administrator to get this thing done. Uh, we were able to finally uh, build a few uh, gaps that we've had in the borough for some time. Um, and we look forward to working with the, the union to continue a uh, good relationship and, and, and foster a uh, dialogue back and forth to get, get the rest of the work done. Um, other than that, I, I, I'd like to ask Mr. Wright to continue because I really don't want to report twice on the, on the budget issues and the, uh, and the finances, so I'd, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Wright. Thank you. Uh, my, my request to council, uh, after speaking with the uh, finance director, is to table the budget reduction for tonight uh, from their budget for administration finance. Uh, I've spoken with the director and looked at the calendar. Uh, recommending a special meeting just for the budget introduction on April 16th. It's also a Tuesday since that's normally the night that we meet. Uh, we, we then calculated the 28 days after advertising and that would put us in line with May 14th for, for the, the adoption, for, for the public hearing. We would have to have state approval for adoption. Uh, similar to the prior years, you're usually waiting for final approval until the state aid numbers are, are certified in the state budget. So, so we're kind of also recommending that we do a temporary budget, um, emergency temporary appropriation, which we've done in the past, although we have some new council people here, and I'll just uh, digress to, to explain. At the, at the reorg meeting, uh, when we do the, the regular portion of the meeting, we do a temporary budget, which is by law 26.25% of the prior year's adopted budget. And that basically gets you uh, through the, the start of the year. Um, this will give us a second bite that will take us through that June period when we'll have likely to have our final uh, adoption and then we'll have our regular budget established. Although if it's approved any time earlier, it just converts into the adopted budget. So uh, there's a couple items in there you'll see tonight. Like the pension payments are, are due this week. So that's $400,000 we didn't have in the original budget because it wasn't required in January. So you don't want it to calculate into that 26.25%. Uh, and then salaries and wages also for the next couple of months will be in, in this resolution. Um, we do still want to continue with our action items regarding the budget tonight, though. Um, Joyce Pinto, our tax collector, has reported previously that due to a couple two large property owners not um, paying their taxes before year end last year, we had a lower than normal collection rate. So there's ways that the state allows you to deal with that. Um, because it directly ties into the amount that we have to put in the budget for the reserve from uncollected taxes. And, and again, we have some new people here. I'll just uh, hit on them very quickly. Basically, if, if you say you had a 90% collection rate, you have 10% that don't pay. So in theory, you have to raise 110% of, of what you need so that when you hit your 90% collection rate, you have enough to pay all your bills because we are required to pay the county 100% of the county levy we're required to pay the local and the regional school 100% of the levy, even if we have a lower collection rate. So our collection rate this year was approximately 95 point. 
or, I'm sorry, 97.52. Yes, yes, I won't let you do I knew Drew's but let me make a mistake there. But basically, uh, in the past, we've been around 98.0304, and the state allows you to use a three-year average. So we have a request for a resolution tonight that, that basically designates that we'll use the three-year average. It will bump us up a few percentage points uh, because we're likely going to, to have a, the tax sale sell those properties, and, and we'll, we'll get the money in this year. So there, there's really no risk that, that you know, we're not going to get the collections that we need. And it, it's more, I guess it's a more accurate amount that would be going out to the taxpayers by using that three-year average. Uh, we're also going to request the, what we call the COLA ordinance. And each year the state it says what the, coal, the cost of living amount is that you're allowed to increase the budget on the appropriation side. And that's not related to the levy uh, caps that we have now. Um, in the past, it used to be 3.5%. This year it is 2%. What council may do is you may pass an ordinance that allows us to go up to 3.5%, and then if we don't use it in 2013, they allow you to bank it for two years. So since we, we don't need it, we likely won't need it this year, but you can never know what's gonna happen in the next two years, so it's always prudent to do the coal ordinance so that you have that available for banking. Um, both of these items must be done before you do budget introduction, so that's why we request that we still move forward and, and do these two items. Uh, and they're, they're basically housekeeping items, uh, but and we come to you for them every year, but they are required to be done before the budget's are reduced. Um, so that, that's basically where we stand on that. Uh, we, we, we went over this uh, many times over the past few days. We, we could have presented the document today. Uh, we do have the, the draft numbers in such a shape that we could have done that, but I don't think it would have been the best product, so that's why I requested the extra two weeks, and that's why we're not gonna do the actual but uh, we are working 24-7 on budget and finance, and because uh, I have a report on that topic, I'll take it back to the director. Yeah. Um, that's all I mean, you know, just to reiterate, uh, you know, council, I'd like us to at least uh, set the meetings. It's okay with everybody. We're in the April 16th and May 16th. May 14th. May 14th. May 14th. Uh, just for no, no, this is a uh, council public meeting. Public to, uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, be, well, would we want to do them at our caucus type time or at 7 o'clock? Joyce does not have a vote. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that okay? Yeah. 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 It's more like 7 o'clock. Does anybody think it's. Yeah. You want to say 6 o'clock? Would that help the. Uh, uh, Mr. Bashan, I think you need to be here for that. It's a, it's a budget meeting. Is it going to be on May 14th or when? Uh, April 16th will be the introduction. Oh, yeah. I can't be here the 16th. Tuesday the 16th at 6 o'clock. Yeah, we need a majority of council. We need at least four members. I can't be here. And then, uh, Eleanor, are you okay with that? Yes, I'm fine. Mike? I'm probably here. It was Yeah, we need at least it's right we need four four members four to vote. Four. <coughs> Is it six or seven? Six. We'll make it seven? You said in April sixteenth. Yeah. Seven PM. Seven PM. April sixteenth. Seven PM on April. Seven PM. And on the fourteenth it's seven PM. We appreciate how much work you're going to have to do to get this thing, get this budget ready by uh, by April 16th at 7 p.m. So we understand that, and I think council will. will I, I'm not just saying that with the public, also that we realize that uh, you're put under a lot of burden to do not just uh, the budget but also the administrative duties. So hopefully, the members of council will realize over the next uh, two weeks that we do have to prepare this uh, budget so we can get it done on time. I'm referring to the actual document. I mean, we have we have the spreadsheets. That's what we went over at the caucus mayor, so that the numbers won't differ too much from that document. Did you get that already up here? Oh, that was the that's the temporary appropriation to 
to get us through what you might suggest is that a solution. You might have got the worksheet. No, no. I, right, that's this temporary thing. It's something and then it's going. That's what I want to know. I have another comment. Other than that, I have no other comments. Do you have any questions? Thanks. You're finished? Okay. And what about the education? Thanks, Mayor. Uh, March 9th, we had an annual uh, previous clinic for Carlo. And we had service at 140 dollars in tax. And I'm all gravy up. And uh, the Women's Club, they, uh, they had their they took donations for the animal welfare, and they collected like $109 and money and other donations. And uh, it looks like your uh, rebound. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, tonight, for the first time in 12 and a half years, we hired two new full-time police officers, and uh, we are congratulating both of them, and I wish that they have a very successful career with the Romney Police Department. Uh, going on, I see Sergeant Murray back there, and he's in charge of the lockdown procedures that are being scheduled during this week at the elementary school and at the high school. These are uh, so that the people have training in uh, rapid deployment. So it's important that they be familiar with the schools and uh, can familiarize themselves with the operation of the school and the hallways so that if, God forbid, something terrible should happen, or there would be rapid deployment and they won't be trained. And that's in all the schools, and that's going on this week. I understand that the D.A.R.E. program will be taking children to Washington, D.C. I don't see Officer Walk here, but I know that he's quite excited about that. The fifth graders will be going to Washington, D.C. on May 9th. And uh, we had a chance to talk with Pastor Joe Gagnell over at Holy Child Parish about the handicap situation because we'll be repaving Orchard Avenue. And when we do, we have to decide how we're going to put the handicap. Uh, Father Joe is totally aware that the handicap situation there is very dangerous. It's on a better than a 10% incline and we have seen wheelchairs rolling down the hill. So those handicap spots will be removed and there will be new consideration regarding where the handicap parking will be, handicap uh, parking for the cars will be. And we're, we're working on that and the ramp <coughs> access. Also, Chief Diana told me that all five towns are on board with the new computer system. So this is a situation where all our computers in those five towns will be upgraded to the new and most modern and most effective techniques. This is important that we have this upgrade. Uh, it will be um, part of the funding for capital improvement in this town because it will be an ongoing um, situation. So that's on board. And crossing guard manual has been updated by the chief and that will be distributed to all the crossing guards and the sign program. The reason why the sign program is in effect is because GIF, that's the Joint Insurance Fund, requires that a yearly evaluation of all the signs in the town be made. So any missing, uh, crooked, defaced, faded signs should be reported. And if you have them on your street or you get no of signs, Please let the, fire, let the police department know that. I also met with Chief Liberty, and we discussed several things. Number one, the federal grant, 
for the new fire truck was denied. This really was a tough blow. We've applied for this grant for five years, and each year we've been denied. So because of this, we're going to have to look at looking uh, for next year to purchase a new truck. Uh, that's quite a, quite a big investment, but it's totally needed, totally necessary. The ambulance specs have been put out, and I believe there might be some discussion about the ambulance bid. The, uh, I believe those bids were done, Joyce, and they, did they come in yet? The bids? Yes, Len, in fact, Len just handed me a letter telling us to whether we can move that forward. Okay. Uh, the old ambulance is being taken in and trade. The 700 hertz uh, new system, Mobile units have been given to the fire department. However, the permanent units haven't been installed yet, and I believe the county will be doing that within the next couple of months. And I'm going to do a little advertisement. The fire department is having a wine and cheese on April 12th, and it's $30. It's a wonderful night, and if you're interested, Chief Liberty is taking reservations. Okay, public safety. As a part of the GIF funding, um, we have a public safety program that's in effect. And basically, it's checking signs, roadways, and sidewalks. This is for insurance purposes, and that program is ongoing and it is effective. I also attended breakfast for the GIF. And it's an annual breakfast, and towns that have met all the requirements for satisfying the GIF criteria get monetary rewards. Our town was granted $900. It was wonderful. And uh, I just want to make sure that everyone knows that not only did one department, but all the departments had to participate in this kind of program. So it was an award that was given to all the heads of all the departments. Joyce and Rich and the chiefs, uh, the public works, all participated in this. That $900 goes to all these departments. So it, it, it's, it's going to be shared. And I thank all the department heads for their work on that because it's well deserved. <coughs> We had an emergency management special meeting, and that had to do with uh, the replacement of the CCMUA pipe, and that is going to be probably the end of this month. And the meeting was called so that everybody knew what they would be doing when the pump station is closed. Uh, I see Mr. Ramond here, and Mr. Ramond called this meeting so that everybody would be on board, know what their responsibilities would be and know what the procedures would be when the pump station is closed. Mayor, that is the end of my report. Thank you, Eleanor. Uh, we want to wrap the links in Eleanor. Okay. Mayor, okay. Holy Child Parish, 5050 off premise cash raffle, 629.13. All paperwork is in order, and I do need a motion on that. I'll, I'll make a motion. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Yes. Yeah, I have it. Discussion on the Yeah, I think that she said yeah. we, we have the ambulance on for this. Yeah, we can talk about it as part of the motion. Yeah, we'll make the motion at 13, 813, 16. Right. Public events and engineering at F. Yes. Uh, engineering. Uh, we are in discussion right now in regards to putting a more advanced and safer security system on our bathrooms down in Green Acres and making some other changes. Our engineer will be getting some figures on the, on the changes to the bathrooms. Um, and I'm hoping with better weather coming, uh, we will be making some more progress in its construction. And then for the rest of, of the report, I'll rely on more. Uh, the committee has been moved, our committee has been meeting to continue organizing Youth Mayor and Council Week. 
Both Mary Lawrence and Teresa Schools have been notified that the candidates will be writing essays, and those essays will be collected on April 12th. Uh, the seniors, I'm laying off to the seniors, and there are March meeting. The seniors made concerns were potholes and signs that were fake. I reported all of their concerns to our Public Works Director Beverly, and she informed me that all of these issues are being addressed with Public Works and will be taken care of. Uh, join the Green Team on Saturday, April 20th from 10 to 12 for an Earth Day nature walk to benefit the community garden. The walk will begin at Harry Williams Building to Green Acres and back. This will be a fundraiser. There will be door prizes, t-shirts, and much more. So for more information regarding the walk, please go to the Runaby Green Team Facebook page and like us. Or you can email runabygreenteam at gmail.com to pre-register. Thank you, and this concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Park and Rec Rec Recreations, uh, just a couple weeks ago, met with uh, Mark Facial and Steve Bach from Bach Associates to go over plans for demolition of the old RYAA clubhouse. Uh, this is at the corner of Elm and Broadway. It is sitting in the, uh, in the parking lot of, of the RYAA. Uh, we discussed removal of the soccer ball uh, for further uh, field and storage sheds. So uh, I received a letter from the RYAA. They're all on the same page as we are with all the demolition. Uh, we got a, uh, working with the streets department, we got a quote of additional 3745.77 from our streets department to, uh, to demo this building, uh, which is a good savings because our quotes are coming in around $7,000 for a demo of that building. So they're helping us out and uh, we appreciate that. Uh, we're uh, gonna purchase a shed to take up the storage of that building that the soccer and, and baseball were using. Uh, that's uh, gonna be around $2,800 for a new shed. Uh, also, Parks and Recreations uh, Committee met with uh, Councilwoman Moore, Councilman White, we met on discussing the operations of the Harry Williams building. Uh, it was our first meeting on this issue, uh, so the criteria is set, and uh, we're going to be uh, start to sit down and take an idea from what this uh, the committee feels we should do with the day-to-day -day operations of the Harry Williams building. Uh, we reached out to uh, American Discount Fence for some uh, prices on uh, netting to help make the. Uh, the fields up at the uh, major fields in the RYA that's safer, and uh, we're getting some prices back on the on just the netting, so we don't have to spend major money on redoing the fences. And I also met with the softball, running the softball, uh, to assure them that we are uh, trying to reorganize our all our park recreations and willing to work together with our organizations in town, and uh, they. Uh, they already got back to me with the, a list of what they need done, so I'm, I'm assuming that they're on board with it. So we're just gonna go through that list and uh, see what we can help them out with. And uh, the rest is uh, progress, Mayor. Thank you. Public Works, Beverly Moore. Thank you, Mayor. How are you? Fine. Okay, uh, I'm gonna put this down as almost like my first quarterly report. Some of these items I have reported on numerous times, but because of the weather conditions and the time consuming nature of some of them, they are ongoing. And a lot of them have been touched on by everybody else. So uh, with the street sign issue, we've placed 20 new street signs throughout town. Uh, we are continuing to order more because there are more that need to be replaced. So I stress to everybody here, if you see a sign that needs to be replaced, please contact either me or the Public Works Department and let us know and we'll look into getting one replaced. Uh, we are moving forward with the efforts overall to keep the town looking a little cleaner. The street sweeper has been out and about. We are working on getting a kind of like scheduled routine of where it's going to hit at certain times. Right now it's been hitting a lot of the majors. We haven't really done too much as far as uh, minor streets only through the weather more than anything else. Uh, the RYAA, we discussed the building demolition, so we are, like I said, saving quite a bit having the Public Works Department do it. I was very happy that they're on board with it. We did do uh, some minor improvements to the RYAA overall. We painted the dugouts. 
Uh, they are going to be labeled with a logo representing the RIAA or run and eat overall. We have, that's yet to be determined. We haven't come up with a set thing yet. Uh, yard breeze never really officially stopped this year, uh, mostly because of the weather being so mild. So we are continuing. It's going to start up again uh, officially. Uh, I stress to everyone that the regulations and the guidelines need to be kept to the rules of what they are for the borough and for the town. It, they need to be in an open container yard waste or in a brown craft bag. Those bags can get purchased from a home center. We are in the uh, process of having labels created to be affixed to the bags or the containers that don't meet with the requirements. So if it's not an accepted container, it will not be collected. Uh, we are creating more usable space here within the borough. We've been done some painting upstairs and we are looking into getting some carpet installed in two of the rooms to just you could have more space available for whatever activities or just office space in general. Uh, Harry Williams building, uh, we did order, I don't know if you're aware of this, we did order um, automatic shutoff faucets for all the bathrooms there. The ones that went on automatically were ridiculously expensive, so we got the ones that you hit the button, they run for a certain amount of time and they shut off. It's just pushing us towards being greener down there. Um, Public Works is in need of replacing several major pieces of equipment whether it's the dump truck or the leafer, so I'm hoping that um, we can make that happen. They have purchased a, a new gas powered leaf blower, which is a good thing, and so that's heading in the right direction. So other than that, I'll report progress. Thanks, Mary. Uh, the hand dryers, yeah, we, I'm sorry, on the higher we do have a, a quote for the hand dryers. I'm not quite sure, honestly, if I need to get a second quote for it, but we do have everything in place because we are trying to make it greener, get rid of the paper towels, eliminate any problems with it. Toilets being clogged up, sinks being clogged up, so um, it just makes it a better environment. How much was the quote? You know what? I don't have it in front of me. I apologize. I can get it to you though. <coughs> it was all. I honestly only obtained one, um, and it was so from. That might, be, that might be okay. If, if it's yeah, less than a certain amount. I'm not sure. No. I apologize. I'm sorry. I don't have it. Um, okay. I have it somewhere in the pile of papers in my life. If it's, over, if it's over a certain reason I'm asking, if it's yeah. over a certain value, you have to try and get three quotes. Correct, and I don't think it was. Okay. It was not ridiculous, but it was an issue that we were dealing with more because um, of the block wall, and there was no way to, right. so they would have to be mounted on wood and then have a conduit run to a source. Okay. But it would definitely be a, a step in the right direction down there, so. I'll get it to you, though. Okay, that's it. I was very impressed with the flowers. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much. No is there anything more to say? No. Okay. I just want to check. No, I'm not uh, so, my, re my report is to tell you that I don't have anything to report with respect to the uh, CWA contract that I've not yet heard back from the representative. There's a draft of the document that's been in the team for close to a month. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I submitted my report in writing, and Steve Bach talked about it at last week's caucus meeting. There's only three things I want to add to that. Um, Councilwoman Passy already talked a little bit about the, the bathrooms down at Green Acre, but the things we're looking into to get across are a different type of door lock that might be automatic. Uh, we're looking at getting an alarm ins installed and also a potential video camera. So we're trying to get quotes, and we have a meeting this Friday with the contractor to, to go over those items. The second thing is we met with the um, Sustainable run -and meet Committee today, and we're working with them to evaluate the point system so that you can go green and all that and get the um, grant out of um, the different grant that's are available with that green. Um, and the only other thing is we were asked to look into a possible mechanism so that you can keep sidewalks clear of clutter and I'll present a report to the public works or the uh, safety committee director on that at the end of the meeting. I have a, a memorandum from our architects that might enable your code official to cite some violations on those things. And that's all I have. Thanks for your Old business. 
bank enjoys as debt. New business. Uh, resolution 1353 is a resolution amending resolution 0951 authorizing borrowed cell phones or spiking and little cell phones. United Nations. Thank you. 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 Thank Yes. Mr. Casio. Yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mr. Root. Yes. Mr. White. Yes. Mr. Capone. Yes. Okay. Sorry. And the resolution be uh, Resolution 1354 is a resolution authorizing the borough remedy to enter into a cooperative pricing agreement with the Cranford Police Department. I'll make a motion. Second. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Pazio. Yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mr. Root. Yes. Mr. White. Yes. And Mr. Kapak. Yes. Yes, but I mean, it should be adopted. Resolution 1355 is a resolution authorizing a shared services agreement by between the borough of Runnymede and the borough of Belmar and Mount Ephraim. Uh, for trash collection for 2013-14, and the, uh, that's it. That's the second. Have a motion. So moved. My second it. Roll call. Um, Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mrs. Passio. Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. And Mr. Gonzalez? Yes. Mr. Gonzalez? Resolution be adopted. Resolution 1357 is a resolution authorizing the Runnymede Girls Softball to conduct a coin toss on County and Mother Street. Can I have a motion on this? Resolution? I make a motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, can we just pause for a second? And this morning, do you want to at least clarify for everyone for the public we want to talk about just the trash? So everyone knows that what we did is we uh, uh, were using Belmar to pick up the trash in the borough of Runnymede. And I think there's there's a date change, and we might as well start letting people know that there is a date change. It'll still be Monday for yard waste. Uh, it'll be Wednesday. Tuesday for Tuesday for trash, and Wednesday and Thursday for recycling. So we're going to collect Wednesday on one side of the pipe, Tuesday, Thursday on the opposite side of the pipe. If the trash day would be relocated. I just wanted to figure this is a good service to try to get it out there to let people start to know that it's going to happen. So, so starting in uh, June 4th, that week, uh, trash will be moving until Tuesday. And then those houses that we're getting recycling on Tuesdays will move to Wednesday. We will be setting out notices. Uh, we'll do everything we can. But the, the reason we're doing this is to remind everybody is there was a 20% savings uh, going with our neighbors uh, compared to waste management's previous uh, contract, not even the renewal contract. It was the, the old contract. It was 20% higher. Sorry. Resolution 1359 is a resolution regarding employment in the uh, borough of Rundy. This is the entire Retirement of Dominic Brown. Can I have a motion? So moved. I second it. Roll call. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mrs. Passio. Yes. Mr. Root. Yes. Mr. White. Yes. And Mr. Papalos. Yes. Six this resolution should be adopted. Resolution 1360 is a resolution regarding employment for our rugby. This is the uh, retirement of Robert Christensen. Have a motion. I make a motion. I second that motion. Roll call. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mrs. Passio. Yes. Mr. Root. Yes. Mr. White. Yes. And Mr. Papas. Yes. I move this resolution now be adopted. Uh, we already did 1361. So 1362 is a resolution authorizing the disposal of our property, property which has no value. This is uh, Donating one of our old cars, a Bronco, to uh, the Kennedy County Fire Police. 
it is. Motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Uh, just to discuss this, uh, this was a walk on uh, the, the idea that we have these old vehicles. Uh, the police department had made a recommendation to the, to the council about making a donation to the county for a fire police. So this is one of the old vehicles that is in the parking lot right now. Then I have to roll call. <clears throat> Mr. Capavas. Yes. Mrs. Moore? Yes. Mrs. Passio? Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. And Mrs. Cumber? Yes. I am. Um, I guess things with the list and everything gets goes away. Uh, I will skip 1363 for now. Yes. That's a closed session, correct? Yes. Uh, we'll go to 1364, which is the uh, resolution averaging the tax rate for, for the tax collection rate for three years. Yeah, I make a motion to approve. Second. Senator Roll call. Yes. Roll call. Mr. Capaz. Yes. Mr. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mrs. Passio. Yes. Mr. Root. Yes. Mr. White. Yes. And Mrs. Kelly. Yes. That's six items. I move that this resolution now be adopted. Uh, resolution 1365 is the uh, temporary budget. I think Rich Davey will copy of that. I make a motion to I second that motion. Yeah. You don't need it. Yes, you need a roll. Um, I have a motion. We have a motion. Yeah. Uh, roll call. Uh, Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Um, Mrs. Horn. Yes. Mrs. Passio. Yes. Mr. Root. Yes. Mr. White. Yes. And Mr. Capalas. Yes. Six hours. Now we have uh, resolution 13, we have re resolution 1366 is a resolution accepting the retirement of uh, uh, Rainy Deacon. Uh, I make a motion. I second that motion. Do we need a roll call? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Kelly. Yes, Mrs. Moore? Yes. Mrs. Passio? Yes. Mr. Ruth? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. And Mr. Papas? Yes. That's six items. Okay. We already did 67. That was the uh, memorandum for the contract. And uh, 1368 is if everyone would like to accept the ambulance bid that Len worked so hard to review for today. Up to everybody. Just to yeah. remind everyone, we only got uh, only one, received one one bid. It was under the amount that we thought it includes the the, the the gurney. Is that correct, Rich? It's the, the, the structure. Uh, that's the option. I think we should approve with the option because it was under our threshold now. Correct. Right? Yeah. Forty-one. So it's one hundred forty-one thousand eight eighty-eight. Then I have, I have one question, Len. The binder, it's VCI is the name of the people that came in and picked it up, but yet you, you're saying the bid actually goes to say it? That's what it's awarded to? Okay. Is there only one copy? How many people picked up the bid? Um, three. three. And the only one that bid on it was uh, VCI. Maybe that's the are they a broker? Is that how? Is that payor? The BCI is that how it works? You want to answer? Right. BCI is the company name that they bought out. It was Big Scottsdale's back in the day. Never changed the name, but the corporation name is the Bayhead. The Bayhead. So that's who we awarded to, then, and it gets awarded to Bayhead. Okay. Thank so, you. <laughs> so I make the motion to award the bid to Bayhead Investments. Yeah, I make a motion to award to Bayhead with the option. Roll call. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mrs. Passio. Yes. Mr. Root. Yes. Mr. White. Yes. And Mr. Capaz. Yes. Six hours. Does anybody have anything of oh, the other resolution? Well, we have another. I know, but we have we have, we have an ordinance. Yeah, we, we have two. We actually have two. Which might be just doing things so that they can get there to work. Lots of public here. Okay. So, you want to go back to the first reading? Yeah, let's do the first reading. Okay. First one is 1304. This is an ordinance amending ordinance 
number 430, chapter 1 and 6 of the Code of the Borough of Runnemey, Vehicles and Traffic, Article 12, Schedule 1. This is taking a parking place to remove the uh, to remove it. motion to I make a motion to adopt on uh, first reading and to have a public hearing on Wednesday. Uh, seventh day. Oh, I guess it's May. I guess we could do it in May. May seventh. Isn't it seventh? June seventh. June seventh. For your group. The next council meeting. The next council meeting. So is this the removal of the handicap parking space that's no longer needed? Second it. Yes, second it. We have to have a roll call on that. Yeah. Roll call. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mrs. Patsy. Yes. Mr. Root. Yes. Mr. White. Yes. And Mr. Compass. Yes. Good now we have ordinance 1305. It's a resolution to exceed the uh, the cap, the goal of the Mr. Moore. I make a motion to approve the ordinance. Second it. On first reading. On first reading. Uh, and advertise the parties to law with a public hearing to be held on May 7th? Yes. And I second it. Yeah, that's what you That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> and who made the five? Uh, Roll call. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mrs. Passy. Yes. Mr. Root. Yes. Mr. White. Yes. And Mr. Capone. Yes. David Bills. Do I have a motion? I make a motion that we pay the company's contractor. All second. Roll call. Roll call. Uh, Mrs. Kelly. Yes, Mr. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mrs. Fazio. Yes. Mr. Ruth. Yes. Mr. White. Yes. And Mr. Thomas. Yes. Yeah, this is the good and welfare portion of the meeting. Anyone wishing to speak, please come up to the microphone, state your name, <coughs> your address, and speak to us. Uh, Tim Smith, 18. Wait a minute. That was loud. Tim Smith, 18 East 4th Avenue. Uh, I wanted to find out what the status is on the uh, liquor store plan. Uh, my backyard actually butts right up to the parking lot of the liquor store. And uh, I'm not happy with the situation over there. I just want to know before I get any further, what is the status of that? Uh, I know Nick, you're on the planning board. Um, do you have any kind of details that you could provide? Uh, the liquor store on 4th Avenue, it hasn't been in front of the board yet, has it? Uh, no. Mr. Dickinson, I, I hate to defer to you. I don't think so. No. I don't think it has, right? Mr. Dickinson, uh, the uh, uh, vice chairman. The application, the application has come to this year. All right, so What's is your there, concern about? Well, my concern is that uh, we really need a privacy fence put up around the entire parking lot. Um, ever since they knocked the house down, they have all the cars parking back there because you can't park on, a, on the street. On the street. So uh, there's people urinating like in the parking lot on the side of the building. Nine o'clock in the morning, it doesn't matter, broad daylight. And uh, the only thing between my property and theirs is a chain link fence. So I have two small kids, three and seven, and a wife. And we go in the backyard and we actually have to see people go in the bathroom. Uh, their trash is blowing into my property, which I try to keep you know as clean as possible. And uh, I'm just not happy with it. So I know that they don't need to go to the planning board to put up a fence. They already have a fence, all they gotta do is replace it, all they need is a permit. Uh, however, they're dragging their feet, and I don't know, it, it's been over a year since I talked to the owner of the liquor store. I had Chris Mecca come out. Um, Ed White, thank you, he actually came out personally and I discussed the situation with them, but uh, I'd rather address it amongst the rank and file and uh, you know, try to get this, you know, get some immediate action as soon as possible because it's, I don't wanna move, but if I had to, I probably would because it's just, it's bad. Obviously, the, the public hearing issue is calling the police and the code enforcement for the trash. If the applicant comes in front of the planning board, you know, you'll be notified as a neighbor right there, and you could come in and... and All right. Well, is there, there, is there is a... Planning board, because that, that would be the, the body that would be able to put those restrictions and put those conditions. Um, well, is there a way to light a, like, light a fire under them to get this ball rolling? Because it's really, 
And you know, the health enforcement would come in front of the planning board, but if there if there are code enforcement violations and things like that, and, and if he's uh, using the parking lot uh, improperly, I mean, I'll, I'll talk to him. It, it, lo it looks like can. It really does. I hate to say it, and you know, Mayor. You know, I, your comment was very nice about how the county representatives drive through the town and they're, they're happy to see. But what they don't see is just behind that liquor store, I which I have to see. Bat, it's just a dirt lot, trash, there's drug bags, believe it or not, that blow in my backyard. Have you complained to the construction office? I, I talked to Keith Knight, I talked to Chris Mecca, I talked to the owner of the liquor store himself. No, I'm asking you, did you call in here? I, I, I called a few times, yes. They would come out there. They would talk to the talk to the owner, but we have to get more action because it's just it's just a recurring issue. All right, I understand that if we can't mitigate it, at least let's quarantine it and keep it on their property. There's no reason why I need it in my in my backyard. I don't need my kids dealing with it and seeing all the you know the drunks and the, and the trash, right. you know people and objects, you know. So hopefully, if we can do something, you know, I'd, I'd really appreciate it. So, okay. and on top of that, we also have the uh, the vacant house which is actually on the corner of 4th and the Pike, which is right next to me. It's got the, uh, the tax business attached to the front of it. The individual that lived in the back that owns it, he has since left, so that property is now vacant. Uh, all the people that want to go to the liquor store, uh, and a lot of times they are drunk, they're doing a crab walk down the sidewalk. They actually cross my property and across my neighbors just to get to that back parking lot to take like a short, just to cut the corner instead of taking a sidewalk. So again, if they can get a fence to put up, a privacy fence that goes all the way around it, so that way people are forced to use the sidewalk, I shouldn't have to yell at these people. It's not even my property, but you know, I'm sticking up for what's mine, you know, and what I want to say. So. Well, we'll we'll, we'll look into it. I'll I'll ask Keith to be yeah, here. Yeah, we'll present it to Keith again. Absolutely, he's right. proactive. I mean, he really he is. Proactive. I know he went out there, but it's just it's just recurring. So it's nothing against him, it's, no, no, no. it's against them. And they don't put a single dime into their business. You know, they just send it right over to India. Right. You know, and it kind of well, me. I want to look into it with Keith, see if you gave him a time limit. We don't know that. You know what I mean? I want yeah. to know. Okay. We'll check into it for you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Smith, 876 Orchard Avenue, and I do remember when um, Tim was at a meeting, they said that they put in for a permit for a fence, and nothing happened, I guess. The liquor store, so that was about a year or so ago, Tim? They were talking about doing it. They put it, somebody it. said they put a permit in to get a fence, so I don't know what happened that. Um, I, I, I will look at it also. I mean, we were, if Mr. But, White went out and looked at it, I'll, I'll talk to him, and we'll go find out anything that's going on. I mean, I'm not even opposed to going and talking to the liquor store owner and finding out what his intentions are. My other question is, when you talked about offices upstairs, um, does this building have an elevator? No. How would you put offices upstairs in a public, in a public building? I don't know if that's an order. Like, how would a person may not be disabled now, but now they're working up there? And is there um, ordinances with public buildings? If you have offices upstairs, how would you get there's no elevator. We're currently looking into getting ADA access up there, either through an elevator or some type of chairlift. We're looking into that right now. Okay, so you couldn't put offices upstairs. Well, well, I, 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 I mean, so, offices, where maybe it was my wording, honestly. It, it's just space right now. It's just open space. It's just sitting except there. Except for store, storage, it whatever. It was at one point, and honestly, they have created like storage areas that for like Joyce has one, right. police have one, and they've turned into closets. So now it's created this long space that the main one overlooks the front of the building out into the pipe. And it was always just piled high with boxes. So now it's been cleared out. So we're just kind of maybe putting a conference table up there just so that there's an area that people can have if, they, if we need to have a meeting or something. But you have to remember the ADA issues. Absolutely. And it like is that. something that we have discussed. I mean, it's, this is like such baby steps as we are right now. It's just like we just But a big it, step is yeah. getting the elevator or the or a way up before you can consider all of this. My, uh, I have one more question, I'm sorry, but it's in regards to the sewer problem and the millions of gallons of waste when you shut the pumping station down that are going to kind of head into the beaver creek or into the water. If they shut the pumping station down, because I live down towards them, is there a possibility if they shut that down and the pressure backs up, that it could back up into my basement? They have the tanks 
the, the, that the big tank sample there, I'm going to look at from the field. And well, from they, the field? They, well, where the big tanks are. They brought in trucks from uh, the CCMUA, and they're, pump, they're going to pump everything in there. Into the tanks that are not going into the water? Are they going to pump? Because I thought they were going to make something where the, it was going to kind of go in because they didn't have any other way to do it. I don't think so. I think the, the best yeah. trip for this is that we will advertise uh, in the next yeah. couple of days in the paper for a public meeting right. on, on April 18th. Well, so, yeah, my problem is I'm going to kill it. Okay, and what, we, what, what I will do is I'll make sure that we have the, the, like the top questions and answers. Because my concern sure is if I am not at my house and it does back up, and I'm going to come home from vacation, and I'm going to have a sewer in the basement. Right. Uh, we, we are Can going you guarantee to sure that that's public. not going to I, happen? I am not going to guarantee anything. Uh, the CCMUA is lead on this project, and they are the, their oversight is the County Board of Health and the State DEP. Are they and on board the DEP? They are. There, there oh, yeah. is a case number on this. They, they're aware of what's going on. How about any other? They're, are there any other people complaining about the possible pollution situation? Um, and that's where they're going to explain Sierra to us what they're doing. Uh, we've been given a, a brief update, and it's basically they're going to manually control the entire system through seven stations that come forward. They are going to you know, minimize the amount of time that that station is offline. They're going to make sure that the, the stations behind us are, are basically empty so that they can hold as much as possible before it comes forward. And I am not any way, shape, or form an expert in this area, which is why we're having them come in and explain to the residents. Have our, as everyone I, is talking about. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I want to make sure my basement. That's the official sewer term. That's it. It's tsunami, and it's coming. And we're all very this is not the first, where this, we are because we're down. This is not the first time this happened. It happened during Irene. Yeah, um, but it wasn't that many gallons of stuff. Correct, but we are not. We're sure talking exactly millions as opposed to 30,000. Right, but, but when, millions when, upon it comes, millions. when it comes out of the system, it, it's going to come out at the lowest point, and, and yes, they can explain how far they would expect it to go back and who who exactly will be impacted by it. So they, they will... But what if a person isn't here? How am I going to address that? Well, there's going to be weeks prior to... Mr. Wright, I'm going to jump in, but right. the CCMUA lines are separate lines from one of these lines. Right, I know that. So that pipe does not... Uh, Attach to your line coming out of your house. Now, I'm not going to say that I promised it will. I, I, I can't because I have but a problem. A separate, there's a separate. That's a separate pipe. It's their line going through our tank. I, I just personally don't trust the CCMA because they had a problem with them. That's so why I the I need to come, to come to the town and, and, and talk to us. Yeah. I hopefully you can maybe have a meeting before the meeting. Uh, I, I I don't want to defer to the CCMA, um, but. By all means, if you have a question and you won't be available, feel free to call the CCMUA. I mean, they. Oh, I have. Okay. Okay. I, I just started. And again, so we're not, we're not, I'm not trying to put you off onto them, but if you won't be available and you have specific questions related to your property, I think that they can answer that much better than we can. Okay. But what happens though if it happens in our town and it damages people's property in the town? Then they will be responsible to mitigate any problems. That, who, you know, who, who helps in that mitigation? The town or the person has to do it personally? We, we have opened a, an OEM incident on this with the Office of Emergency Management, so we are being very proactive at this point in that all of our departments have met, public works, uh, fire department, everyone has contingency plans in place for, for any worst case scenario where the roads are closed and things of that nature. I'm not worried about the roads, I'm worried about space. Right, and, and, and I think their plan would be <coughs> similar, and I, I'm assuming that the residents have had this happen in the past, not, not, uh, not I'm just saying, not necessarily related to this, but I can speak in another town. My grandmother's had this happen in the past. There are processes for what happens if there is a backup. So your grandmother had sewer in her basement. She the certainly backup? did. It was. It was. A, shame. And most properties have backflow preventers, and hers was related specifically to an issue with the street and things of that nature. But um, but we had to have the insurance company come out. They had to to do. The town the insurance company or the personal yeah. company? Uh, I don't. I don't think it's a liability. The town has nothing. That's what my question. Paul, the answer to your question is that the CCMUA is a complete and total control. The good news, the asset aspect of it, of being responsible and proactively fix this, and also the negative side, which being if there's a problem, it's their problem to, 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 to deal with it for you. But so right, the town just washes its hands of helping its citizens? Absolutely not. The town's not doing any such thing. The town has no control. 
therefore no response. We, we can't do anything. Nothing of this is ours. It's all theirs. Right. So if something happens to a person's the CCM property, way deal with that person has to deal with the CCM way, and the town can wash their hands of it. Oh, it's the CCM well, way. Well, it's, it's your phraseology, but I wouldn't phrase it that way. It's, you, you, deal with, you deal with the entity that it has the responsibility, and that entity is the CCM UA. Well, hopefully we will not have a major problem. That's what we're all in. Val Palmasano, 31, North Oakland Avenue. Just wondering about uh, the summer program. Is there any thoughts about having one again this year? For the youth? Yes. Oh, uh, yes. We're definitely, uh, definitely going to have the same type of program this year. Uh, it, it's, I, I am just getting my feet wet, so I'm, I'm actually looking at the paperwork that how it was ran last year, uh, the suggestions that we uh, we actually received suggestions on what could change for this year, uh, with, like the, uh, the music program uh, part of it. But uh, definitely we're going to have it again this year, and we're going to start uh, moving on it real soon. Terrific. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Smith, um, wondering about um, where we at with the uh, the old barrel garage, the environmental contamination. Um, have we have we did any more tests, or we plan to let the public know about this at some point? Um, I've been checking, and I talked to uh, U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, and uh, they're saying that when you have an underground storage uh, tank and it's leaking, that you should get the public involved uh, pretty quick and let the surrounding community know that there is a problem and it could impact uh, their environment, their health, uh, their, their property. Um, are, we, are we doing anything, are you plan to do anything like that? To have a public meeting and let people know about this? Because I think you're make, making a major mistake here. Uh, not doing yeah, we have, the borough has hired a licensed site remediation professional they're currently reviewing the file and are coming up with a plan of action and they're going to present that to the borough. If that requires public notification, then that will happen. But, but let me clarify, there is no tank. Yeah, the tank. But there is contamination, is that correct? There is contamination. I understand the tank. contamination is from an underground storage tank, is that correct? Uh, from, from years ago. I understand years. there was an underground storage tank that was removed. Okay, so the United States Environmental Protection Agency guidelines, if there's in fact contamination from an underground storage tank, you are supposed to get the surrounding community, the whole community, let them know early and often what you're doing, what's going on. At this point, the people that live around there probably know zilch, nothing. Mr. Bashir, hasn't this been an ongoing process for eight years, about nine years, ten years? Yes, something like that. We just talked about it last, last the, meeting, this, uh, or the other meeting, about groundwater contamination. This is the first I heard about groundwater contamination. And the fact that you may have to do some kind of remediation where you're going to have to filter groundwater, possibly. That's yes, and that's possible. And use some kind of you talk maybe bioremediation or removal of soil and, and all this other stuff. So I, I think that you know, number one, you got a you got a, a guy with a business going on up there um, that's that's leasing that facility. That you're going to have to clear him out, of there. and then you, you're going to have to test all this material. You're going to have to remove material. You're going to have to remediate, and then. I mean, how are you going to accomplish this and you're not telling anybody that? We're waiting to hear what the licensed site remediation professional has to say. Okay. And that's, and, and you're going to bring it to you folks? Or what, what's your plan? Well, we, we were to wait. Well, we were obligated by the state DEP to hire this gentleman. We did what we were told to do. We hired the gentleman per their order, correct? correct? And, and they're telling us what to do. The only thing this body will do is once we're told what to do, we will more than likely have to go out and borrow the money uh, to remediate this property. And, and you are right, there may be uh, costs, there may be changes that have that property, but at this point... And there is an active file with the DEP, an and we're following their protocol right now. Do I understand correctly that the DEP's uh, underground storage uh, tank fund is, is done, it's, it's empty? Yes. That's our understanding, yes. Okay, so the borough is going to have to uh, kick up the money, remediate this themselves, ourselves. 
That's right. something changing. So, and this this could impact your budget. We do have a, a small amount of money from prior year to be bonded on this, probably about twenty thousand dollars in there, but that can be drop in a bucket. Correct, but, but we we don't know how much to put in until we are told what needs to be done. Right? Okay. So we are being proactive at this point, but we are basically in a whole pattern until they tell us specifically what actually we have to take. So and again, you know, we can't tell or do more the public beyond where we are because we don't know where we need to take it at this point. Yeah. Well, my understanding is you're, you're to tell the public early on. And what what would we tell them? You would tell them there's contamination at the site. Yeah. You're working to clean it up, and you're concerned about their health. That's what you tell them. No. No? I'm not. I'm not coming up. Okay. We'll get the report, and we'll move forward. John Schmidt, Gloucester State, New Jersey. Councilor? Ron Bessley. One was Tom Stanley, Gloucester State, New Jersey. Three items I wish to address tonight. First, earlier this year I filed a note for request with the borough for financial records paying the Civic Association, which under this government falls was part of the government. Um, I was denied by your clerk. Um, spoken to the council president um, probably about five or six weeks ago. I was under attorney review and I was told that I wouldn't have access to those documents. I'd like to ask where it's at. That was a government organization. There's been no change in the documents are still in my possession and we're still doing it. That's what I told you, but the attorney still has All right, so I'm free to pursue that. I can pursue that. If it's any legal action against this borough. Always so, free to do that, John. Sounds good. Um, second question. I sent a letter to the council president. Um, zoning board, do they have a solicitor yet? Yes, the zoning board has a solicitor. Who's the solicitor? Uh, the solicitor is the law, the law office of uh, uh, Roland and Caldwell. How is that legal when under your borough code it states that you must appoint a zoning, a, a solicitor, other than the municipal solicitor, singular? You need, you need to appoint a lawyer, an individual, to the position of solicitor. Certainly anyone in that law firm can represent the board and do legal work, but there needs to be an individual in that authorizing resolution, you turn your record for the board. The board does not have it. Why I'm not going to stop you there because that appointment, that, as far as we're concerned, we appreciate your legal opinion, but I disagree. I don't believe there's any problem with it. Finally, um, anyone up here ever take Latin? Void ab initio. Anyone familiar with that? Void ab initio. Void ab initio, sure. Void from the beginning. Void from the beginning. That's pretty much exactly what it translates in English. There's a court case next Friday at 1 30, the Superior Court. I was just council president, mayor, Mr. Root, the three of you attend. Thank you. You are going to go, John, they don't know where it is. I mean, maybe they do, but I don't know. Camden County Superior Court. Okay. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Maria Pantorella, 12 South Oakland Avenue. Uh, first of all, as the RYA president, I would like to once again, and for the final time, invite you all to our opening day parade and festivities, which will, on Saturday, April 13th, um, we'll be leaving Bolt School at 10 o'clock, probably to arrive at the field somewhere about 11. 
given everyone we have. Um, we expect opening day ceremonies to be approximately an hour, so by noon, the first pitch will be happening. Uh, um, I want to make a special note to thank Officer Sam Polsky, who reached out to me, um, as he does every year, just to find out what the date is, what we need from the police officers, and then has also agreed, and it was a huge, huge uh, help to us last year to close Elm Avenue from Smith Lane to Independence, to our Constitution, um, where Wawa is. It was a huge, like I said, it was a huge um, help to us in terms of safety for all the kids. So he again has scheduled that, and uh, I just wanted to make known that he is and, and always has been a help when it comes to this. Um, with regard to the Harry Williams building, as the RYAA wraps up our use thereof, um, I wanted to know if Joyce, if I could put in writing that we could continue using it on Friday nights only for um, everyone. Could we continue to use it on Friday nights at five dollars per use um, going forward? Just for uh, again, we would provide insurance um, to the borough of for basketball and basketball only. Well, I, I think that the committee is, is looking to redo the, uh, um, the policy and procedures. It, I, don't, I don't see it as a detriment, but that would be up to... We currently use it on Friday nights. I, I think if you, uh, if you want to come in, because I think Joyce still is filling out an application for this year to come in here, uh, I think that Mr. Root and, and Ms. Moore can look at this and make a decision. Because there is some work being done in the building, mm -hmm. and as long as you know, maybe it works around that. Okay. Um, and then uh, my other question is, am I to continue opening and closing it? Um, is it done? Uh, no, actually, the group that's in there on Sundays has called me every day asking me if they can use it every day. And I told them, no, that's not through the bar. Oh, I've told them. In fact, I don't respond to a text. I go there on Sunday mornings. I need them to open it. I go there Sunday nights. I need them to close it. And I don't respond to a text. He has texts. In fact, he even texted me Saturday and wanted to know why we weren't in there and could he use it since we weren't. Why wasn't St. Teresa's in there? Why weren't we in there? And could he use it since we weren't? And I just ignored it. I think he has it until the first week in April. And then he's done. And this is, so this or Sunday was in I'll call tomorrow. Okay. At least that's the theory of the dates he gave me. Okay. okay. We should be done with all rentals and then the opportunity for the committee to come up with a policy before we take uh, the new schedule for next year. Okay. Somebody will let me know. I'll call Joyce tomorrow just to confirm in terms of the Sunday group and then but they should be done. Okay. All right. Um, I heard the report on the trash issue, but I just want to know where what, if anything, you can do to help the RIAA, because we are literally spending um, approximately between two and $300 a month for our two dumpsters, and with baseball season rapidly approaching, I just need to know if I can end that contract and... Well, well, well part, of the, part of the contract with the borough of Belmar is to pick up dumpsters for the borough of London. So I think Mr. Wright has looked into the dumpsters that they are recommending we get, and, and we will be putting a couple of them properties throughout the, the community and I think one of the locations is is the fields, the library, the public works, and the borough hall, I think. Um, I love all those locations, but my concern is specifically up until about three years ago the borough handled the trash removal at the RY and as the cost of everything goes up and our registration stays exactly where it is, this is now becoming a it's, it's becoming a hardship. It's becoming a problem for us to, yeah, not Belmar, a hardship, but. Belmar was proactive in this. They're the ones who told us about okay. this, this uh, service, service that they'll do for us, as long as we make the, the outlet, outlay to purchase the dumpster. Understood. So, is the borough going to gonna purchase a dumpster, and when? Well, probably not until they start the pickup in June, and I would not make any changes until the borough purchases these dumpsters, figure out, figures out where they're going to put them, and then works out an arrangement with well, here's, here's my question to you then. I'm coming in tomorrow with our site request from 2012, and the one thing that is going to come out of the 6000 that we get, we're spending about 3400 of that on the dumpster, and I have proof of that you know, in their bills. So I think that's that. I really do. Because we've incurred a cost over three years that we have not passed on to the parents, and it's not something we can continue to do. So even at this point, if you said to me public works, I mean, waste, if you, if you, Somebody, whoever's in charge of waste management, 
contract called and said, listen, they're going to start putting their trash at the, you know, I would reach out to volunteers and ask them to go up just to, just so that we can save that. We've tried it. We tried the whole thing last year, you know, with putting recyclables out. We're only talking about a few more months. I know. It's huge. The few more months we're talking about are our busiest trash season office. I understand that. All right. We don't have the deal. We don't have the contract. We don't have until June. Yeah, I understand. It's long out. It's been, it's not something new. It's something that I keep addressing that just kind of gets Almost there. Um, do, is there any, Joyce, is there anyone using the field behind ACME right now? No. Can we? You can put in a request. Okay, I will. Yeah. Okay, we have uh, outgrown our, I've reached out at this point to CBAA, which is Timber Park Association, not only for our games that we've been playing there on Sundays, but now you can reach out. We have nowhere to practice. We have 27 in house teams and five travel teams and bolts is letting us use it seven days a week, but we, we literally still don't have enough room for soccer, and that's allowing baseball you know, to have that season at the ROI, so um, anything that we can uh, utilize is appreciated. Um, I was unable to come to the caucus meeting on uh, Tuesday night because, um, and I'm really sorry I wasn't able to come because I heard the ROI AA was uh, one of the topics of discussion. Um, first of all, I would like to, in public, uh, request a copy of the lease um, between the RYAA and the Borough of Romney. Um, it is, uh, obviously, it was done prior to your administration and prior to mine. Um, but there was a discussion that the RYAA has not paid their $1 per year lease to the Borough of Romney. And supposedly, without me, and I went through the class, I cannot find a copy of the lease. So I'm reaching out to the Borough and saying, please provide it to me. Um, as soon as possible. But uh, based on that $1 per year um, that we have not paid, I have a check for 25 years here. So if you can look through your records and determine what we have paid, you can kindly take that as trouble for our non-payment. But I, I really find it hard to believe that that's discussed in the caucus meeting and not one member from this borough can call and say, hey, just so you know, um, you know, you guys haven't paid. Um, I, I, when I asked our treasurer, I put this on, on the table at a meeting, and the treasurer said, I know we paid that. And I said, okay, well, I, I heard five years, I heard 10 years, so here's all 25 years of the lease, basically. I just want that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Um, so, yeah, I, I think there's a total lack of communication, which really bothers me. So as soon as you guys are available, I'd like to get you and our board together so that we can get on the same page, because all this talk and you know what, we're still very fractured, still divided, and still I think working in the opposite directions on a lot of things. You don't and have the and the and ROI, yeah, I really do. I mean, again, when there, it's discussed, when more time is spent in a caucus meeting talking about dollars, and here's the other thing, that lease, and someone needs to recognize, that lease needs to be amended big time. I mean, it needs, you know, I, I was literally berated by a member of council last year when I didn't ask the members of council or the spur for $1 one dollar we raised money to do work to preserve your your land okay our land <coughs> you want to look at it and i was told that i was wasting people's time and money now the lease from my understanding clearly indicates that we are to maintain it that same member of council was yelling at me for not spending your money but ours and our people's time so we're letting them jerk holes as this was going on and, and the work we did was not a waste of time, and was not a waste of money. It's the nicest field out there. It, it hasn't flooded since we did that. While the lease says that we're to maintain it, I don't think it's any council person's you know, right to scream at us for what we're doing for the money that we raise. So again, I think the lease, if we're going into a new era where the, the borough is going to take some responsibility for the land, then I think we ought to look at the lease, and I really think it ought to be possibly amended. But um, you know, nobody took any, and this was the word I heard, crap from me. But I took a lot of crap from someone else. So I'll just say that we did what we needed to do without requesting anything from the borough. And, uh, and, and some parents actually pulled money out of their own pocket to do so. And I just, I think it's very sad that, you know, you as a new administration have to hear it. But I'm a new administrator and we're hearing, and I'm hearing the same thing. You know, and I was, I, I was a huge help, um, you know, to everyone up here in one, some way, shape, or form. So it was, you know, if, if we owe you a dollar, please reach out and we'll pay you a dollar. All right? I hope to see you all at opening that. All right. I uh, appreciate your, your payment and your, your thanks for, you know, 
want everything on, but you know I've been reaching out to you. Yes, to you. absolutely. So, don't make it sound like the council hasn't been reaching no, out to you. No, but it, it takes, it takes right. someone who hasn't been where you've been for two months. It's not something that ever should have gotten to the point it is. And I don't think you alone can make the change. I think it's it's a group that has to make the change at this point. I don't think it's any one person on council including you that can do it. As active as you are in this community, I don't think you alone can do it. Well, it's going to, to change. It's right. Going to be done. Oh, that's so what I'm saying. I, I, I do it with us. You know. I do it with us. That's not it. Thank you. Finally, for those that are interested um, to be more specific with you, in Superior Court 130 in front of Judge Holden, uh, docket number is Camden L1164-13. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 